Hey. Hey, you can't go that way. Nope, it's not in our room. You're too big. You're too big to go that way. Bugaboo. What's the difference between MPPT and PWM? <laughs> Do you know what the difference is? Do you know That's what the difference is between watts, <laughs> amps, and volts? Bugafish? Nope, let me go. Bugaboo, why can't we run long cable runs on PWM charge controllers, huh? Bugaboo, you have to get in the hole. Hey. So bugaboo. apparently Bugaboo is going to help us unbox this. Bugaboo, how much power does the average person get during the winter? None. Nobody gets any power. Okay. Ooh, we saw a bird. Ooh, there he goes. Ooh, we saw a bird. Okay. Alright, where were we? Alright, I think we're gonna do an unboxing. Jesse, not everyone likes cats as much as us. I agree with that. Sorry, if you're a dog person, I, I do apologize. Just stop watching this video. Yeah. Uh, so today, we're gonna be unboxing this Flex Max 80 charge controller from Outback. Some people call it an FM80. Um, they do make a 60 amp version. This happens to be the 60, excuse me, the 80 amp version. I really have no idea what's in this box. I'm assuming that it's a charge controller, but there could be other things. And I guess the only way to know is to open the box. I guess I could tell a little bit of backstory while I'm doing this. What do you think, Alyssa? Go for it. Well, so if you haven't already, and this is the first video maybe of our channel that you're seeing, we did do videos on our current solar setup. We've done a couple of them. They include the first solar system that we had, which was portable, and then we upgraded to a 480 watt Go Power Extreme kit. And we've been using that for the past year. And that brings us to today, which is the FlexMax 80. We've been living off grid for about two years now, and we've actually had a full battery bank, even though it was used. We did do a video, I think we did a video on that. If we did, we'll link to it over here, talking about this used battery bank that we picked up. And that system has been working okay for us, for now, but the thing is that system really is designed for an RV. So we've got a couple of major problems. One, it's just too small. It's 480 watts max with a single charge controller. And that's not enough uh, current for what we're doing because we've got a freezer, a stand-up freezer that we keep some of our food in. The other major problem is the distance of the panels from our charge controller. Because the system is designed for an RV, it has a PWM charge controller, and they're really not meant for long distances because of the amount of current going down the wire. Well, our panels are clear up on the hillside over there, which I think the total distance is under 100 feet. But with the number eight wire I think that we're using, um, we're definitely losing an amount of that current before it gets to the controller. The net result is batteries are not staying charged and in the dead of summer, we're having to run our generator. But the good news is we've got 750 watts uh, in panels over here that are a different voltage. They're 24 volts. And so they won't work with this system. It's all 12 volts. We're hoping to grab one more panel but for the time being to keep our battery bank 12 volts because our inverter is 12 volts. The FlexMax 80 can do multiple battery bank voltages. One of those is 12 volts. So this upgrade is the next stepping stone to a more robust system down the road because this charge controller can grow with us into uh, bigger battery banks or bigger voltages and bigger inverters. This FlexMax 80 really is a major upgrade for us. The charge controller that we have right now is very, it's very basic, it's very primitive. And this FlexMax 80 is quite the sophisticated charge controller. One of the features that I am the most excited about is the data logging feature. It can actually keep 128 days worth of data in its memory. So you can actually tell over time what kind of solar power you're getting. The system we have right now, it's a total gamble. I mean, you have to stand there and look. And the only way to really to know is to look at your battery condition. Because if you've been around solar for any amount of time, you know that a partly cloudy day can really give you a mixed amount of solar. You don't really know how much you're getting. Flex Max 80 will keep track of that for 128 days. So in the box first is a manual. Let's just open this here. There's actually a really great PDF that's available from Outback's website. I have it on my phone because I have a hunch that I'm gonna be referring to it often. And I don't know about you, but keeping paper around is kind of annoying. But let's just see what they include. So the first thing that's included is a quick start guide. And a lot of their manuals uh, reference the 80 and 60 FlexMax models um, together. So 
This is, looks like a pretty basic schematic on how to set up your um, system. This is really handy, I guess. Um, there's a lot of uh, you know complexities when it comes to these systems, but this really is what I would call a quick start guide because your system can quickly escalate in complexity from here. Kind of gives you the quick navigation walkthrough, shows you some of the navigation methods on the screen. I think the electronic part, I think I would encourage anybody to just read through the manual and make sure you're up to speed on how to wire this together. This information is super helpful. Because we're currently wired to 12 volts, we're going to be maxed out at 1,000 watts in uh, our array, which kind of stinks. But it'll allow us to stay with the 12 volt inverter that we have right now, and down the road we'll look at upgrading that, which will give us more versatility. Uh, okay, so they got a big, big red box here that says this is an example only. Of course, you're going to want to comply with national and local electrical codes. Some of the uh, really cool features here, of course, this is an MPPT uh, charge controller, so it can track the maximum power point. The LCD is backlit, and like I mentioned earlier, it has 128 days of data logging. The step-down voltage ability is pretty rad, so you can run a pretty high uh, PV voltage, which is the voltage coming off your panels, and the controller will actually step that voltage down to your battery bank voltage, which gives you a lot of versatility on the battery bank voltage. That's one of the uh, restrictions that we have with our current system is that we are limited to 12 volt battery bank because that's what the system requires in order to operate. On the back here, um, I think I can kind of see what this is designed for. I think this is meant to be kept near the charge controller just for quick reference because um, it kind of shows you some of the language and um, system voltage screens and the navigation on that. And then main menu and some of your sub menu items, which I think until you get really familiar with this, it can be kind of confusing on where to find what it is that you're looking for. And then it gives you basic navigation of what's called the end of day summary screens. And this is where you'll get to see like your peak system voltage, the amount of kilowatt hours that your system created or generated that day, minimum voltage, etc. cetera. So uh, I think this is really meant to be kept by your charge controller. Um, in lieu of maybe something more digital like on your iPad or your iPhone. So pretty cool that they include that. A couple other things, they include a warranty uh, registration card and also a copy of your five year limited warranty. You have to register the product of course to get the uh, warranty. It looks like there actually is a set of safety instructions that kind of goes over what their symbols mean and some of the risks and hazards. It looks like it's in several different languages. That's not an instruction manual, that's just uh, safety instructions. And then it looks like they include uh, a type of grease to be applied to the cables before you insert them into the system. Corrosion is definitely one of the um, problems with a bare wire system. And it looks like there's a couple of, uh, not strain relieves, but just uh, nuts that you put into the charge controller to prevent abrasion on your cables. They also include a copy of the testing that this unit went through to, uh, I guess, just share with you, you know, how the unit did. I think one of the things that's super deceptive about the FlexMax, when you look at it online or, you know, in a catalog, is its size. This thing is a monster. By the way, I think these units, if you were to buy them new, run around uh, maybe eight to nine hundred dollars. But there are refurbished units that are available um, on places like Amazon, uh, and I think you can save maybe one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars on those refurbished units. So here's what the FlexMax 80 looks like on the outside. I don't have the dimensions uh, exact here, but I think this thing's about 15 inches tall and it's probably right at about six inches wide. And there's a lot that's hidden here that we'll have to take a closer look at. So your uh, cable inserts, um, there's actually access on the side, only one side, straight in the back, and then on the bottom. And they're in knockout fashion, and that's where those plastic inserts will become handy to prevent the metal from cutting cables. Looks like there's a cooling fan up here at the top of the unit. And I know that cooling is by far 
one of the uh, weaknesses of charge controllers just because of the amount of, of work that they're doing converting uh, electricity. So cooling fan, pretty stinking important to keep this thing running efficiently, especially during the summer months. I think this is our uh, cable access. So let's take this door off. Oh, it's a bunch of barcodes and I'm not sure exactly what those mean. So inside this door, there are a couple of plug-in um, receptacles. One is, the, is for the remote battery temperature sensor, which we did not get with our FlexMax 80, but I think we're gonna have to go ahead and do that because it's such a crucial piece to getting a good charge on your battery bank. The other port here is for their mate uh, system and I don't fully understand that so I'm not going to speak to it. It is an auxiliary unit that allows you to do additional data logging and programming and things. And then here we have the two lugs for the uh, photovoltaic array and then your two battery lugs. The minimum size of cable they recommend for your battery is number four and of course that's going to really det be determined by the amount of uh, current that you're sending to your battery bank. So since we're running 12 volts, we need to make sure that those two leads are very generously sized. And of course, a simple grounding lug so you can ground the unit. Overall, I mean, for, for such a nice component, I have to say that Outback really does focus a lot on quality. I'm certainly not an Outback um, experienced user, but you know, for the amount of money that you spend, this entire unit feels really solid. This door is made out of metal. The entire casing here, metal, um, and everything fits very precisely. You know, there's not a lot of plastic in this Outback unit. I'll just say that. Not as a judgment of plastic, but you know what I mean. I'm not sure exactly why Outback calls this the Flex Max 80, but I think what's really important to understand about this controller is that it's not just for photovoltaics. This controller actually can do wind, it can do hydro and solar. There certainly are other considerations that need to be done when you're doing those uh, alternate means of generating current, but this uh, controller is very flexible. So this is not just a solar controller. And on the side of the unit here, they do outline some of the maximums uh, for the system. For example, the maximum photovoltaic source voltage is 150 volts. That's the absolute maximum. Um, they encourage you to design the system so that it cannot ever achieve more than that. That will damage the controller. Um, they also outline, of course, that the maximum current available to this is 80 amps. And then also there are the ability to set up a diversion load which for you wind and hydro folks out there, you know what that is. So that if for some reason you get an overspin or some other situation where the current is too high, you can divert the excess load. Outback does make a, a manufactured box that bolts directly, or this FM80 bolts directly to, and I think these mounting uh, holes might be for that purpose, and that's just for a box. Um, and then up here at the top, they provide three hanging mounts to give you a nice sturdy location. I would say this entire unit probably weighs three to four pounds. So you're going to want to have a solid mounting surface uh, and they provide some of that stuff. I don't know how to get that box that they provide, probably find it from Amazon or from Outback directly. Well, other than the cat, I had a hunch that this unboxing would be pretty uneventful and I was right. <laughs> Right? Put you to sleep. That's but the audience, not me. <laughs> unless, yeah, wait, nope, they're definitely snoring. Uh, so anyway, if you have a need for a unit like this, uh, this is what the unit looks like. And uh, we actually hope to be uh, more interesting in a future video. What if we, you're still watching this, nerd alert, nerd, nerd alert, alert, nerd alert. Uh, we're not pointing <laughs> fingers, but, uh, but I am. So if you need a unit like this, this is what it looks like. We actually hope to be more interesting in the future when we get a chance to put this system together. We do need to do some more work on the layout of our panels. Um, and then we hope to get just maybe a, a temporary setup out here so we can start harvesting at least another thousand watts of power every day to help offset our generator use. And of course, down the road, when we can up our battery bank voltage and our inverter, we look forward to really taking advantage of this uh, really high-end charge controller.